Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Candela. I'm a hypnotherapist and a transformation coach. Welcome to my channel. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. Enjoy. I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see below you as you come down to the surface. I don't know. I'm experiencing almost like a wave of fear. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're sensing fear toward? It's fear, but where I'm going, I'm not seeing. I guess I'm expecting vision. It's all right. I want you to have a sensation as though you're putting on an energetic spacesuit that will protect you from anything that you may find. And as you're putting this energetic spacesuit on, you will begin to perceive things and yet feel safe. Once you have that energetic spacesuit on, just allow yourself to continue on this journey. And I want you to simply become aware of the first impressions that you get around you. It's like a field. And is it daytime or nighttime? Daytime. And what do you see in this field? Seems to be wide open. What's growing in the field? Grass. So there's nothing but grass around you? Mm, there's uh, some trees in the distance. And what's the weather like? It's kind of warm, sort of sunny. And what I'd like you to do is look down at where your feet would be and tell mm. me what you're wearing on your feet. It looks like boots. What do they look like? Black. They don't have laces. They're more pull-up. And what are they made out of? I'm not sure. Okay. So shift your attention to the rest of your body. And tell me what you're wearing on your body. Seems like a uniform. Describe it to me. It's like a grayish, loose pants with side stripes. What color are the stripes? Red down the middle and two white on either side. And become aware if you're holding anything or carrying anything in your hands or if you have anything else on your body. It feels like I have something on my head and something in my right hand. It's not very heavy, but it's wooden. So you're holding something wooden in your hand? Yeah. Something is saying to me that it's like a long rifle. So shift your attention for a moment to what you're wearing on your head. It feels heavy, like you have to maintain your balance. I can't tell if it's like a tall hat, but it's heavy. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to step outside of your body, look at your body, get all the information you need, and then step back right into it. One, two, and three. Go ahead. Oh, it's like a dress uniform. There's like suspenders that cross over the chest, and they're white, and the hat is black. It's not a hat. It's hard to describe exactly. Is it part of the military uniform? Seems to be, yes. And what is it that you're holding in your hand? It's a long-barreled musket rifle. It seems there's a bayonet fixed on it, but it's older style, like something you would see 1840s. 
And if you could describe that head to me a little bit better, mm. how does it hold on your head? I'm not sure, because it doesn't feel like it's strapped, but it feels like it's snug. And is it tall? Mm, yeah. So please go ahead and snap back into your body. Now tell me, are you in a male body? Male. Okay. Are you young or old? Younger. About what age are you? 28. Mm -hmm. Are you healthy? Yeah. And what are you doing in that field right now? Seemingly waiting. Just become aware of what it is that you're waiting for. Like a ceremony of some form? There are other soldiers near you? No, it's like I'm way early. There's a few people there, but it's like I got there early. And just become aware of what you do on a daily basis. It feels like this is what I do. Like a showpiece. I'm not thrilled by it. What do you mean by a showpiece? Like I get paid to dress up, sort of. So you're not a soldier? Like a ceremonial soldier. And become aware of what is going to happen later on in the day. What it is that you came there for. And perhaps you move forward in time to the moment when the event begins. And just tell me what you're experiencing around you. There's no excitement. It's like it's a reenactment or something. It's like a this was sort of a thing. And what are you reenacting? Well, I'm not actually reenacting. I'm watching something happening, waiting to be part of the presenting of, as if there was some kind of historic battle, and now they're giving out some kind of award for it. And become aware of who you are meant to be, or your rank. I'm a corporal. In what army? I'm not sure. The first word that comes to mind is Russian army. Mm -hmm. We're going to remove that energetic barrier that we put in before around you. So you can step in more fully into this experience and really become part of it. You will still be very safe. Let's move a little bit further in time to the point that the main events start happening. And tell me what happens. Well, I'm standing opposite a line. I can see in front of me that there's a line of soldiers dressed similar to me. So it's like there's two columns, and I'm in one of them facing the other one, listening to somebody talking. And you will be able to hear them very clearly. And you don't have to listen to the entire speech. You will just be able to get the gist of what they're saying and process all that information. So tell me what they're saying. I'm not understanding it. I'm having a hard time hearing it. Okay. So we're going to turn the volume up. And so you will start hearing it louder and louder until it becomes a very comfortable level at which you can understand what they're saying. And tell me if they're speaking in a language that you understand. That might be part of it. So we will also turn on a universal translator and you will be able to understand exactly what they're saying. It's a presentation to a hero. There was something about a battle. But I'm not able to pick up any specifics more than that. So as I touch your hand in a moment, all the pieces of information that have been floating around that are disjointed will come together 
and everything starts making sense right now. Tell me what you're getting. Something Polish battled in Poland. I'm on Polish soil. And it's the battle during which time? The battle took place like 20 years before, so it's the old news kind of a thing. And so tell me what happens next as you're standing in those two lines facing each other. There's a wagon, horse-drawn wagon, that comes up. What's in the wagon? Some people. They're dressed like they would have been in the battle. Are they dressed differently from you? Yes. They have overcoats, no shiny buttons or anything like that. Blues that look grays, darker gray. They're also carrying weapons, like guns, more rifles. Like they were called into the battle after it started. And what do they do? They change the tide of the battle. What do they do within the ceremony right now? They're riding in the wagon, riding up in between the two columns. And what happens? It's like they ride off. It's hard for me to see because I'm supposed to be at attention. So I, I can only see what's like right in front of me, so to speak. I understand perfectly well. So once again, you're going to float out of your body for just a moment. While your body still stands at attention, you will have perfect vision and perspective. They're riding into the reenactment. And so there is a, a field where they reenact the actual battle? Yeah, there's cannons and smoke. And what are they doing when they get there? They're conferring with somebody in charge of the battle. Then they go into different directions towards the battle itself. So do you continue to stand in those two lines? Yeah, I have the rifle in front of me. Just direct your attention to the speech that's being made. The heroes of Poland, these men, it's not coming. It's okay. Now, shift your attention to the battlefield and tell me what's happening there. I can see a group of soldiers running forward towards one of the cannons that's pointed toward them. Do they reach it? No, it's a little bit of a ways off, but they're moving towards it at a brisk walk kind of a pace. Hurried, but not hurrying. 25, 30 men. And what happens? Like the cannon goes off, and I can see the smoke. I can almost smell gunpowder. It's like very, very faint. And when the cannon goes off, what do you notice? The group of men that was rushing the cannon, they kind of split. Some went to the right and some went to the left. So move forward to the resolution of this event. What happens? I almost want to say it doesn't matter because I can feel myself sitting in the field after the event, feeling hot and tired, like after standing in the sun all day, and glad that this is over with. Are you still wearing your same uniform? 
The uniform, yeah, but I'm more relaxed. I'm not feeling like I'm on display. Okay. Do you see anybody around you? There's a couple of people talking. They're also wearing the same kind of uniform I am. It's not like I'm chummy with them or anything. So I'm not engaging or taking part of the conversation. Are you friendly or familiar with anybody there? No, it feels like I'm very by myself. I feel very much like I'm a loner. On the count of three, I'd like you to move to the place where you live. One, two, and three. See yourself standing in front of the place where you live and describe it to me. It's a strange house. It's almost hard to call it a house. It's really kind of primitive in a sense. It's got thick walls, not like cement walls, but like masonry walls. And it's kind of roundish. It's almost like it's a silo in a sense, that it's roundish and open inside. There isn't like rooms. Is it one story? Yeah. And what do you see outside of it? It's almost like a dirt. It's all road in a sense, but there's no yard. It's kind of like in the middle of a village. So go ahead and enter the structure and tell me what you notice inside. It's dark. Are there any windows or openings to the outside? There's a window in the rear, almost like a hallway. So describe to me what you see inside. That kind of sparse furniture. Chair, the table, like a hearth. But there's nothing burning in the hearth because it's still warm. I don't think there's even electricity in here. But it feels comfortable, or I feel comfortable in it. Is it just one open space, or are there are different rooms? There's a large opening, and then it seems to be like a hallway to another area, like a bedroom, that's very dark. That's kind of supposed to be that way. And do you have any light source inside that you ever use? I'm not seeing it, but... There's a candle on the table. So you can take that candle and it will become lit. And you can take it into that other room that's a bedroom or whatever it is. And tell me what you see there. I see a bed that looks more like a cot. It's like it's staked into the ground and has something stretched between the posts so that you're not sleeping on the ground. I don't really see anything else in the room. It's meant for two. Okay. So just become aware of who lives in this house. I live in this house. Anybody else? No, but I think somebody did because it feels like there's a sadness over it. And become aware of who that was. A wife? Suzanne? And tell me what happened to her. She died of some kind of illness. How long had you been with her? Seemingly only a few years. And how was your relationship? We were happy, but not ecstatic. Kind of comfortable and settled. And so just become aware of her illness and what happened. Something with the chest area. And how long ago did that happen? feels like it's been six months that I've been alone now. 
Do you plan to remain there? I feel like I do. I don't feel anything saying I need to leave there. I'm just there. I wonder if you can look around and notice any kind of newspaper or letter or document or anything that tells you the date. 1843. Okay. Become aware again of how you support yourself. What is that you do during the day? I get paid acting. So on the count of three, you see yourself having a meal. One, two, and three. Tell me what you see. What I see is everything's on one plate. It's like a metal plate almost. It feels like it in my hand. And there's corn and chicken. But it's not making sense for some reason. In what ways are not making sense? I'm not sure. Is this not typical of what you eat? No, I'll eat this. Who made this for you? How was it cooked? I cooked it over the fire. And where do you get the chicken and the corn? I bought it. I'm not growing it, so I don't have the space to grow anything. And where do you go to get it? Near the center. There's uh, farmers and such. The center of? Like the village. And tell me about your village. How big is it? It's hard to say. Become aware of why you became that reenactor. It seemed easy. Is that something that you like to do? It doesn't bring me huge amounts of joy, but it seems to marginally satisfy. Is there anything that you would enjoy doing more? Do you have any kind of interest or passion? No, it just seems very flat. Nothing seems inspiring. Become aware if you have any friends or anybody that you spend time with. There's one guy that I spend time with. He's a couple of doors up. Michael or Patrick, I'm not sure which, but he has a wife they have two children. They don't have a much bigger place than what I have. Does it look similar? Pretty similar, yeah. I've got that roundish open floor plan. Have you been friends long? Yeah, kind of. About seven, eight years. And he's happy. And when you're together, what do you do? What do you talk about? He likes to talk about his children, and I occasionally remark that I'm kind of envious. It's almost like there's a bitterness to me. Now, as I count to three, move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. And tell me what's happening around you. I'm getting a vision of 1850, and there's an actual battle. And what are you doing? Confused. Are you in the battle? Yes, I'm supposed to be fighting. And what is your rank? I'm not sure. So tell me what you're experiencing and what you see around you. I'm experiencing a lot of tension. It's almost hard to describe because I don't understand it. It's like I'm turned around. I should have been going north and I feel like I'm facing south. I don't know exactly because I don't have a compass 
but the sounds are coming from different sides of me. So it's confusing me. Like one part of me is saying, go this way, and something is saying no. The sounds are telling me like it should be facing in a different direction. I'm by myself, so I don't have anybody to work with. So become aware of what you're doing. What is your task or goal? We're attacking and I got separated and now I'm feeling turned around, tight and afraid. And are you trying to get back to your unit or to your side? I'm trying to decide what I should do. It's like I'm not prepared. I don't feel prepared for going back or going forward. I'm afraid to move. Stomach is tight because I don't know what I'm going to find depending on which way I go. Do you want to return to your own soldiers? I do, but then I want to be able to do what I said I was going to do, be with the attacking group. And how did you get separated from them? There was an explosion close to us. Were you injured? I don't feel it. I'm dirty. Were you unable to move? I don't think that's it. I just feel frozen. I'm not experiencing pain. I'm just experiencing like a panic. So that explosion froze you? No, I don't think it was the explosion. It was right after it. What happened right after it? I turned around and then everything was different. And then I'm by myself, not knowing which way I should go. Where did everybody go all of a sudden? Do you think that you lost some time? They you said that they were there and then all of a sudden you were by yourself. It seemed like I got splintered off, went down and then came to and now I'm very disoriented. Do you think that you lost consciousness at all for a moment or not? I think so, because I don't remember hearing anything. Okay, and that was after the explosion? Yeah. I'd like you to now move to the moment that you decide what to do next. So what do you decide? I'm going to go in this direction. I'm looking to see if there's tracks to see where the group went. And I'm seeing some tracks in the tallish grass. Do they help you find the direction? It helps me choose a direction. I'm taking this direction. As you're moving along this direction, tell me if anything happens. I start to feel a little more settled. Mm -hmm. Do you find your comrades? Yeah. It's like something exploded around them. It's like they were hit. Are they hurt? Yeah. Some of them are assumedly dead. I come upon them. There's six to eight of them. They look mangled. Are you then the only one who is well enough? Yeah, I'm the only one still standing. Okay, and what do you do then? I start to back up. What do you mean, walking away from them? Yet yeah, I turn and start going back the direction I came. Is there anything that you could have done to help them? I don't feel that I could have. I'm now more scared and running back towards the place where I came to. So you didn't see any signs of life? No.
I didn't stick around either. To check. Okay. Do you return back to the place where... Where I got split off. It feels less unsafe. Mm-hmm. And what do you do from there? I crouch down and I'm trying to calm myself. On the count of three, you're going to move to the resolution of the events of that day. One, two, and three. Just see yourself there and tell me what you're experiencing. I'm with the regiment that I was with and I feel ill to my stomach and like an overwhelming shame. I'm sitting by myself in the open area by a tent and feel ashamed for some reason. Just become aware of why you're feeling failed. I don't feel like I lived up to what would have been expected. What do you think would have been expected? Anything more than what I did. Is it in relation to the soldiers that you found or something else? The soldiers that I turned away from and that I didn't do anything more in the battle. What were you supposed to have done? Well, we were supposed to attack, but I didn't even get to that. Was it because you didn't get a chance or because you actively avoided it? Truthfully, it's more because I reacted and avoided it. I wouldn't say actively avoided it, but I would definitely say that I didn't actively pursue it either. I got scared and left what would have been crucial moments. Now, how do you feel about being a soldier and being in this armed conflict? At one point, I was very for what I was doing. Now, I didn't do what I came here intending to when I started this. So whatever you're fighting for, do you think it's the right thing? I chose to do it, but it wasn't necessarily for the cause. Do you get paid for it? Yes. Was it for that? Partially, but partially to see what I'm made of. Now you feel that you failed? Yeah, this didn't go like I was thinking it would. So allow those images to float away. And on the count of three, move to the next significant event in that lifetime. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're experiencing. I'm feeling older. About what age? 45. And what do you see around you? I live in a more modern area where the homes look like square homes instead of the outdated huts. There's like colors. Things are painted. And just give me a brief description of your home. It's like a square two-story. It's got some windows. I become aware of who lives in that house with you. I do. Just by yourself? It feels like somebody else is there. Become aware of who it is. It's like a second wife. Tell me about her. She has fair hair. She's tall. We're comfortable in the home with each other. On certain levels, though, she feels more like a sister than a wife. In what way? Just feeling like we've known each other. Are you happy being with her? I'm content. 
And where did you meet? After the battles of the war in the market? How long have you been together? Kind of a short time. Just become aware of what it is that you do for a living now. Carpentry? And how long has it been since that battle? Feels close to 10 years. So you left being a soldier behind? Yeah, I still wear uniform stuff from time to time, but I guess I just kind of got past the feelings and learned to live with what happened. So but, looking back at that experience, was that the most influential on you, or were there other events that affected you? No, I still think back on that sequence. What are the emotions that you feel about it? I still feel a sense of darkness around that, as if that's kept me back. Now, what do you think you could have done differently on that day? Or what do you wish you could have done differently? Anything other than run backward, run away from this? So you regret not checking on those soldiers that you found? I regret either not attacking or not seeing if anybody was still alive. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day of that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what you see. I'm laying down and I feel depleted. What do you see around you? There's somebody else there, but not exactly with me. There's a comforting figure in the house, shall we say, but they're out. So somebody is with you, but they're not present all the time? Right. Is it somebody who lives with you or just comes in to help you? I think it's her that lives with me. Your wife? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she's not there with you right now? No, I'm by myself. Are you in your house right now? It feels like it, but the room feels weird, as if it's too bright. Just become aware of where that brightness comes from. It's like there's light coming into the room, but if there's a window, it's not in my line of sight. I'm laying on my side. About how old are you now? Maybe 60. Are you ill? Yeah, it's a sickness, but it doesn't feel like flu or anything. Just become aware of what it is. Something with my leg? And you can even look at your leg and see if it's something that you can see on the outside or become aware if it's something internal. Feels like there's a, a strap on my leg. Has it been a long-term illness or did something just happen? It feels like I took a turn, like something got worse. Did you have an injury of some sort? No, it's an odd sensation. Describe it to me. It's like I'm kind of floaty. The whole body is floaty, and I'm not super clear in thinking, feeling tired. So floaty is in detached from your physical body? Yeah, like when you have the flu and your whole body feels ungrounded. 
And the strap that you feel on your leg, is it on any particular leg or on both? Um, left leg. Is there any pain that you sense there? I can just feel the tightness of it. Okay. So just become aware once again of that light that you were sensing before, that brightness. And I wonder if you will become aware of what the source of it is. Is it natural light coming from the outside or is it something else? It almost feels like it's in the room. So there is something in the room that's producing this light? Yeah, but it's a little difficult to describe because it's not what I've experienced. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is just take that one last breath and allow your spirit to lift out of that body and begin to ascend. And as you lift out of the body, you will become fully aware of what or who the source of that light is in the room. It's from outside. Like something's coming through the window, but it's not sunlight. What is it? It's pulling me through the window. Is it something that you want to follow? Yeah, but it's not commanding me to follow. It's more of a welcoming to follow. You're ready to follow it? Yeah. So go ahead and follow it and describe to me what you experience. Like levitating? Just ascending? And as you ascend, what are you becoming aware of? Feeling relieved. It's like you've read a really long book and you're finally at the end of it. Was it a good book? There were definitely some parts in the book that were unsettling, like that was really uncalled for. Uncalled for in what way? Like feeling that somebody did something to you more out of spite than was necessary. And so for the moment, I'd like you to just look back at the life that you left behind and what are your thoughts about your experience there? Bitter. What are you bitter about? Bitter that it just lacked the fulfillment. Almost like I was gypped. It's like I did what I was supposed to do or showed up when I was supposed to show up and nobody else was there kind of a thing. It's like when you enter an agreement with somebody and they don't fulfill on their end. Now become even more aware on a soul level and perhaps you can ask this light that is guiding you back to help you gain a greater perspective and greater clarity. What was it that you planned for this life experience that did not work out the way you expected? I expected more joy like, no, that's your job kind of response. Did you expect that somebody else would provide the happiness for you? Yeah. Did you have other life experiences on Earth prior to this one? No. This was your first experience on Earth? Yes. So as you return and begin to review that life experience, is the light that was guiding you there with you still? I'm still in the presence of it. Okay. And do you recognize it now? Do you begin to remember who it is? It's godlike. Okay. I'd like you to start reviewing that life as you do when you return from a physical life experience. 
And this light can help you assess it and help you process it. So what is it that you learn from this experience? It's almost like I learned about not trusting. Mm -hmm. It seems strange. So what was your purpose for entering into that life? What did you want to experience? It looked like it would be a good time. So you wanted to enter and sort of enjoy yourself? Like, yeah, experience fun or joy and it never really seemed to materialize. And so as you process that with the support of your guide, what does your soul learn from this experience? That it's available for you when you're actively looking for it. What is available? The pleasures, the joys, the fulfillment. Can be found when you actively look for them. Well, when you take that on, to make that the priority. When you make a priority of finding joy, that it would be available. Okay. So did you not make that a priority in that life? I don't think I did. So as you review this life with your guide, is there a decision made about the next step in your soul journey? Are your next soul experiences aligned with the same lesson? Yes. And so just see yourself being in that planning session, discussing with your guides your next best steps. And what are the options offered to you? To remain inquisitive or to try this again? Can you leave it unfulfilled and forget it? Or go and see if you can do that? So help me understand, if you leave it unfulfilled, what would you do then? Would you not return to Earth? No. Where would you go? That would be kind of determined later, at the time of choosing not to pursue it. Okay, so at this point you're just deciding whether or not to continue with the human experience? Right. And I'm assuming you chose to continue, because here you are. Mm. So when you choose to continue, is your focus mostly on this lesson of learning how to find joy in life? Sort of, but not. It hasn't always been the case. I haven't always been trying to find that joy. I think the decision to come back was a decision out of being unknown about what the other option would have been. So instead of saying, oh, I'll take what I don't know, I'll do this. So at that point, I want you to see yourself in a decision-making meeting about your next physical life experience. And so what do you choose for your next life journey? Living more without fear. Do you feel that fear is what held you back in that life? No, I don't necessarily think that was it. But I experience more of a freedom from fear in this lifetime. Like doing things that kind of challenge it. So as you are sitting there in that meeting of choosing your next adventure, what is the next life experience that you choose? I feel like 
1900s, but female. And on the count of three, you're just going to slip into that body and find yourself there. One, two, and three, just being sucked into that physical body. Tell me about your life. Small town, single woman, teaching. It's like a one-room schoolhouse, and I'm satisfied doing it. I don't have students who are troublesome. It's very orderly. Do you enjoy what you're doing? Yes. Making people smarter, pushing them a little bit, but not really forcing them. Are you satisfied being alone or would you like to have a family? I think once I'm done, it does seem kind of endless because there's always somebody needing guidance and encouragement. Do you devote a lot of time to your work? I have to be thorough. Do you have any time for yourself, for your personal life? Some, not in abundance, but getting to relax and read is always good. And so I'd like you to just move forward in that lifetime to the next significant event. One, two, and three. And tell me what you see. Preparing, working a war effort. Which war is it? Second, much further ahead in time. And what are you doing? Making first aid kits. And about how old are you now? Close to 60. Do you have a family? Or have you ever had a family of your own? No, I retired and started doing activities like this. Did you ever want to get married? It always seems secondary. What was primary to you? Bringing people, elevating them to the next level, opening their horizons. Did you find joy in that? Yes, very much so. Okay, good. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day of that life, the very last day, one, two, and three, and tell me what happens. I'm very peaceful. Where are you? I'm in my bed. Is there anybody with you? No, it's very quiet. And why are you in your bed? I'm resting. Is there anything wrong with your health? No. But I'm tired. Is the war still going on or is it over? It's over, but I feel detached from all of that. Why is that? Because I did my part. I did what I was supposed to do. And you were satisfied with your efforts? I'm satisfied with a lot of things. It's very peaceful. So just allow yourself to take your last breath and very peacefully and gently lift out of your body. And as your spirit begins to rise up, you might find that there is someone that's familiar to you that greets you again. That asking, was this better? They are asking. They or someone asking me, was this better? And what's your response? This feels better. It was better. And what was the difference? 
what made the difference? Being more confident. What is it that you take away from this life experience as you learn more about human journeys? It's more wide open than I could have imagined. Explain it more to me. It's a huge playground and there's a lot going on to see and do. So there are many opportunities for different kinds of experiences. Yes, there's a lot of experiences to try. Okay. And so as you look forward to the next human experience, become aware of what it is that you decide to explore. In other words, what purpose do you set for yourself for the next human life? That I like making a difference and get joy out of it. And is that going to be a life of Christopher? I think it is. I think that is where it comes from. Okay. It sounds like when you were a teacher, that was a similar path because you were making a difference in terms of uplifting people or opening doors for them. So is that generally your direction? But finding other ways, that there's many ways to accomplish that. Good. Now, in that life as a teacher, tell me if you feel satisfied with that experience. Did you accomplish what you set out to accomplish on a soul level? Yes and no. I found something that was great, but in ways it was limited as well. Explain. The audience was limited to just the students that I interacted with. So I wanted to take that service to a larger scale. Where else does this work? I see. So I'd like you now to allow all of those images to fade away. I want all of the consciousness and personality of Christopher to once again return and fully integrate back into the body. I'd like to ask to speak with Christopher's higher consciousness. May I speak to you and ask questions? Yes. Thank you. So I know that you could have brought forth many different lifetimes for Christopher to examine. You showed him the life of a soldier and then um, the life of a female teacher. Can you tell me why those are important for him to review? Because it shows to him the evolution from living unsatisfactorily to living what would be improved and that he's in a journey towards fulfillment. Okay, so one of the things that he's concerned about is reaching his potential. Can you help him understand where that earning is coming from and if it's related to the past experiences? It's related to the past experiences when he's more invested in it, treating it more serious. Joy is serious. If you're serious about attaining joy, it'll be there. So for him, living to his full potential would actually include finding joy? Being open to it staying open. Can you help him understand his path? He said that finding different ways of serving people was kind of what he was looking to experience. Is that his purpose in this life? For him, it's more about 
It's like the saying, you teach best what you need to know. The more he spends spreading joy, the more will reflect back to him, the more he'll find. And is there any particular way or a particular direction that he should take, or that's irrelevant in which way he spreads joy? It's kind of irrelevant. It all depends on appropriate joy. So his professional path is secondary to his ability to share that joy with others and then have it reflected to himself? He's been blessed with talents. It's up to him to choose how he wants to do it. But it is necessary that he does it in order to receive it. He has an interest in history and it seemed interesting that in the first life as a soldier he saw himself as reenacting being a soldier. Where is this interest coming from? He needs to be reminded of perspective. For him, it's important because the moments that bring him joy are in that moment and when he's not focused on everything else, when he's being with what he's doing, when he's being with who he's with. Those are the moments that open up for joy. So it reminds him to stay focused on the present. Rather than getting trapped in something else. Okay. And he has interest in the healing arts and in energy healing. Is there a reason that is of interest to him? Has he had those experiences before in other lives? I think he should as it shapes the aspect of service and it opens connections for him to be in the presence of joy. Not necessarily when you're doing something for somebody, but when they see you as source of relief, that they reflect upon him as joy. And then he can live into that. Any issues that remain unresolved that you may bring to his attention to address in this life experience? I would advise him to stay secure in the moments because they shape the future. And building a foundation through that will provide the future. Okay. So I also want to ask about chewing tobacco, which he does sometimes. I wonder if it's, if it's just a habit he developed in this lifetime or if it goes back to another experience. No, it's a current thing for him. Is there a reason why he does that? Or does that fulfill some sort of need? He's always put stuff in his mouth. If he truly wants to unplug that, he's capable. But the question is, is he fearful of trying to go without it, as if it's a crutch? What would he be fearful of? Change. Okay. So I'm going to ask you now to surround him with your light and love and flood his heart, his mind, his body with the memory of who he is with the feelings and sensations of being loved and safe, and remembering that he chose to experience a variety of different sensations, feelings, emotions. And so he is safe in that this is the playground that he picked. And as he experiences that, help him unplug from that desire. And the rest may be up to him. He always has a free will to choose or not to choose a certain path. When he's brave in his choices, he finds the strength that is there. Wonderful. 
And have you given him that sensation of love and safety? Yes. Good. So now intensify it and help him feel it surrounding him so that when he awakens, he will carry it with him into his daily life and activities. And that will make it easier for him, or maybe even very easy, to make that choice and walk away from that tobacco. Because it no longer needs to provide safety and security for him. The feeling in his heart will do that instead. Now before we finish, I want to ask you to do a body scan. I want you to start at the top of his body. And let me know if there are any issues or any imbalances that need our attention. More variety in his food intake. Anything in particular that he's lacking? More fresh foods. To intensify a desire in him so that he will really want to reach for something that's... Uncooked. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. He's smart enough to handle a lot. So, we're about to let you go, so I want to ask if there is any last message for the moment that you want to give him directly. I'm nearby, even if you don't think so. Thank you. So now I'm asking the higher consciousness to recede to where it belongs with much love and thanks for the help and information that it has given Christopher today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you click on the bell, you will be notified of any of my future postings. Thank you. Bye.